Hello, I'm Ryan Gulick, bringing you another national news update with Inside Swoop in 90. Well, Ospreys, predictions are now showing Hurricane Dorian to make landfall on Florida as a Category 4 hurricane. The UNF Crisis Management Team has been tracking the storm, and the university has alerted students that all classes and student activities have been canceled from Saturday through at least Tuesday. Now pay attention to the term at least, because there will most likely be more updates from UNF, so please stay alert, check your messages, because there is still a roughly 500 mile range of uncertainty as to where Dorian will land, so it is crucial that you stay informed. Well, turning our eyes a little further northwards, Juul Labs, a popular e-cigarette manufacturer, is facing accusations from officials in Illinois. These allegations accuse Juul Labs of marketing their products to teenagers. Now, Juul denies the allegations, showing evidence that they have taken many steps towards preventing their product from falling into the hands of minors. These steps have included the shutting down of its Facebook and Instagram pages, removing some of their flavored products from shelves, and getting 50 retail chains to pledge to scan their customers' IDs when selling Juul merchandise. Well, just as some companies are having trouble searching for answers to questions, so will many happy contestants once again, as award-winning game show host Alex Trebek has reportedly returned to work on the set of Jeopardy after having been away for receiving treatment for pancreatic cancer. I've gone through a lot of chemotherapy, and thankfully that is now over. I'm on the mend, and that's all I can hope for right now. Jeopardy's 36th season will begin on the 9th of September. Well, Ospreys, that's the end of this edition of Inside Swoop in 90. Please do all that you can to stay safe from and informed about Hurricane Dorian. Hey there, Ospreys. I'm Ryan Gulick for Inside Swoop in 90, bringing you a continuing weather update on Hurricane Dorian. Now a Category 2 hurricane, Dorian has been traveling along Florida's east coast just offshore after finally taking its northward turn. Despite the lack of a landfall in Florida, high winds, storm surges, and power outages have been experienced in some areas and will remain possible for others moving forwards. Although Florida has so far been spared the more damaging of Dorian's winds, the Bahamas have been left reeling in its catastrophic wake. Inside Swoop in 90's Tyler Wales reports on the current state of the Bahamas. Striking the island as a Category 5 hurricane with winds of 180 miles per hour for nearly two days earlier this week, Dorian has left the Bahamas completely devastated. According to Red Cross spokesman Matthew Cochran, more than 13,000 homes have been destroyed, this being roughly 45% of the island's structures. The Red Cross has also reported that nearly 62,000 residents of the country are in need of water today. Day, and according to the UN, 60,000 are in need of food. At least seven deaths have been reported since the storm's passing. More details are expected to come within the coming days. Tyler Wales, Inside Swoop. Locally, Jacksonville, though, having experienced tropical storm force winds, has yet to suffer any serious infrastructural damage. Dorian is currently moving away at 9 miles per hour and should mostly clear the northeast Florida area by Thursday morning. The University of North Florida has still canceled all student activities and classes through Thursday. Inside Swoop in 90 will keep you informed on any new updates coming from the university. Well, that's it for this Inside Swoop in 90 weather update. I'm Ryan Gulick. Stay safe, Ospreys. Hey there, Ospreys. I'm Ryan Gulick bringing you a world news update with Inside Swoop in 90. Well, after being devastated by Dorian as a Category 5 hurricane, the death toll in the Bahamas has tragically reached 30. Across the world, many are gathering together to raise money to send supplies, and others are taking part in a rescue plan. Hundreds of survivors gathered at the partly destroyed Leonard M. Thompson Airport on Thursday while waiting for small planes to come and rescue them. Young children, pregnant women, and the sick and elderly are, of course, being rescued first. But Dorian is still a Category 1 hurricane traveling up the U.S. East Coast, currently located in North Carolina, having just made its first U.S. landfall in Cape Hatteras. Yesterday, South Carolina faced the brunt of the storm, leaving many without power, due not only to winds and storm surge, but also tornadoes, multiple tornadoes reported across the state, causing damage to many homes. 
Turning our eyes across the world, Robert Mugabe, former leader of Zimbabwe, has died at the age of 95 in Singapore, where he'd spent the last few months being treated for an undisclosed illness. In 2017, Mugabe was forced to resign from leadership due to political turmoil, being replaced by current President Emerson Munan Godkwa, who has said in regards to Mugabe's death, his contribution to the history of our nation and continent will never be forgotten. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Well, that ends this World News Update with Inside Swoop in 90. I'm Ryan Gulick. Stay tuned, Ospreys.